What's up guys, welcome to Hackneck Mod. I'm Brandon. And I'm Chad, and we're gonna get right into this I hate long intro. We are going to learn to solder today, and I picked three different case scenarios. The first thing that we're gonna solder is the header pins on an Arduino. We're gonna solder a variety of components on a PCB. And the third thing is we're gonna learn how to join wires together and tin the wire tips. Once you know those, you can pretty much do most soldering jobs you'll do in hobby electronics. Well, I'm excited because I need to learn how to solder. Yes, you do. Before we start it, I just wanna go over a few safety items. First things first, let's make sure we protect our eyes. I got you some goggles there, go ahead and put those on. And you wanna make sure that you're working in a well-ventilated area. If you're in a tight, confined space, you gotta pull a fumes away somehow. You wanna make sure you're not next to anything flammable. And also none of the things that we're about to solder are plugged in or powered up. Make sure that you put your solder away where your cats or dogs or animals can't get to it. It often contains lead and you wanna make sure they're not biting it or getting it in their mouths. Which brings me to my next point, you wanna make sure you wash your hands afterwards. Ingesting lead just isn't a good thing. The first thing that we're gonna solder is the header pins on an Arduino. The reason I have a breadboard here is it's the easiest way to hold it. What I like to do is add the header pins in here. Just hold them, you know, with your fingers. Line it up to the breadboard mm. and then, you know, gently push it down. So now what it does is it holds all the pins straight so you don't have to worry about it. Okay. Now that we have our first project ready, let's grab our tools. We want to get a nice soldering station. In this case, we got the, the Weller WES-51. The next most important thing is the tip. You want to make sure that you have a nice little chisel tip. Some people like the conical tips. I don't like the conical tips for most of the soldering because it doesn't quite heat fast enough for a lot of these components. You know what else is also important, Chad? What's that? The solder. Ah, uh, yes it is. So we use a 60-40 blend. That means it's 60% tin, 40% lead. However, lead is unhealthy. They're trying to phase that out. The problem is the non-leaded solder is a much higher melting temperature and the lower the melting temperature, the little bit easier it is to work with. We like to use 700 degrees because you want it to be hot enough to, to heat up the components that you're soldering to. If you set it exactly at the melting temperature and you touch the soldering tip to a cooler device. You're gonna then, have a bad time. Well, it's just gonna cool the tip down and you're gonna meet somewhere in the middle and it's not gonna be hot enough to melt the solder. Okay. The size of the solder I typically use is 0 0.025 or 0 0.031 inches. This is called a flux core solder and that's the most common you'll find out there. If you could zoom in on this through a microscope, you would see that there's a tiny little hole that runs through the center uh -huh. of the entire thread of solder and in that hole is flux. Flux helps clean the surface of whatever you're soldering so it adheres. All right, well, so I'm tired of just talking, Chad. Let's get soldering. All right, first thing we need to do is we need to tin the tip of the soldering iron. And what that means is you want to Dip it use, in the gold. Yeah, you dip it in the brass filings or use a wet sponge. Then you want to take a flux core solder and you want to add it to the tip and the idea is that you totally coat the tip in solder and then you're gonna wipe it off again. But didn't you just wipe off what you just did with that? Yes. Why? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a, that's a really good question. The flux cleans off the um, oxidation and then the, the excess solder kind of pulls away all the junk. Oh, okay. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of solder. As you touch the part that you're gonna solder, you add the solder, make sure it flows, and then pull away the soldering iron. This is a really important piece of information. I think once you get this, it's really gonna help the whole soldering thing click. What you're doing with the soldering iron is you're touching it to the two surfaces you wanna join together. But here's the important part. Both surfaces need to be hot enough to melt the solder. You actually have to use the soldering iron to heat those two surfaces hot enough to melt the solder. Then you bring the solder in and you'll see it adhere to all the surfaces properly. Once you get that, it makes the whole soldering process so much more enjoyable and easier to understand. So soldering iron touches both components that are being soldered together. You bring in the solder, let it melt, let it adhere, pull away the soldering iron. A lot of people have a tendency to do this. Let me show you. They'll touch to the solder points add the solder and then they pull both away. 
And what happens is sometimes the solder hadn't quite seated and hasn't quite adhered to both surfaces. It hasn't gotten comfortable yet. Yeah, it's exactly. Touch the objects, add the solder, remove the soldering iron. Touch both objects, add the solder, remove the soldering iron. You wanna give it a shot? Absolutely. Are you, are you feeling like you got this? Absolutely, I got my wrist ready. All right, here you go. Touch both components. Very good. Actually, that was really good for your first <laughs> on-camera soldering thing. And then you clean the tip after, or you can keep going? No, you can keep going. Okay. You have to touch both components that you're soldering together if you really want to get a good bond. Very good. So let me show you something. If you're ever in doubt, you can do what's called reflow. What's that? It, it just means that you re-solder it. So you touch it to it again, and you solder it. Okay. Now, sometimes you can accidentally bridge to together. So look at that. There's a big old glob on oh there. Oh my goodness. And they're stuck together. What are we gonna do? I I do not know. So it gives me an opportunity to introduce a thing called solder wick. Oh. Do you see that? Do you know what, can you take a guess what that is? It's like an eraser. Uh, yeah, that's actually a good analogy, but it's just copper wire, but it has flux built into it. Oh, okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna touch this solder wick to the top of where we want to remove the solder. So it goes mm -hmm. between the solder and the soldering tip, and you're gonna just hold it there, and you're gonna see it wick up the solder. Do you see that? Yeah. See how it's just pulling it away? Mm -hmm. And then when you pull it away, all that solder went from your joint oh, very nice. into the solder wick. And then you just cut off that Yep, piece. you just cut that off, and you know you have the rest to use later. Sweet. You have lots so of mess-ups. So you can ups. make mistakes. You can. And I always want to encourage people to, to make, make mistakes. To make mistakes. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I mean, you're going to make them naturally, but I, I want to encourage people to not be afraid to make mistakes. Right. So it's good to always have solder wick on hand. Absolutely. But what if you're a uh, cheapo and you don't have solder wick on your... On well, your guy. fortunately, there's always a workaround. All you need is like a, um, maybe like a thicker gauge wire that has a lot of copper strands. So we're just gonna, just gonna cut a piece of that off. Mm -hmm. You just take like a little, a little section, maybe, you know, give it a little twist. Looks like a little paintbrush. Let me try to bridge our connection again and just see if we can do the same thing, pretending we don't have solder wick. Mm -hmm. So, ooh, that's an ugly glob Oh no, there. Chad, I don't have any solder wick. What am I gonna do? Well, I think we have some thick wire. Let's give that a shot. Okay. I'm just gonna do the same thing I did with the solder wick. I'm just gonna put that on there, mm -hmm. heat it up. And I have this, I haven't done this in a while, and it is. it actually did work, but ideally what you wanna do is add a little flux to this. This is flux. And what you can That's do, earwax. I know, it looks like earwax. <laughs> flux is kind of disgusting looking. So if you add just a little bit of flux to your wire, it helps everything flow. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to come back over here and see if we can remove the solder. Oh, that worked much better. Yep. So that just, uh, that solder just wicks right up in there perfectly. Nice. So if you don't have any solder wick, all you need is some earwax. finely stranded wire and some earwax. <laughs> All right, so there we go. So now it's all done. We can pull it out and examine your work. You Absolutely. Did, you did pretty good. Yeah, it does look a little uh, a little dirty. Well, you're talking about all that earwax? Yeah, yeah. So that's flux. It's flux left over from the um, the core of the solder. Okay, should and, we get rid of that or is Well, it yes, actually you should. If you leave it on over time, it will cause your components to corrode because it is a type of acid, so it's eating away that oxidation. Oh, okay. I always like to keep alcohol in a spray bottle. Mm -hmm, that's how I drink it. And <laughs> do not drink isopropyl alcohol. As long as it's not plugged in and it's not powered, alcohol will not harm your electronics. Oh, okay. And it's nice because it evaporates fairly quickly. Just spray some isopropyl alcohol on there. Mm -hmm. Give it a good brushing. And then use a cloth. I use, like to use these microfiber cloths because they're lint free. You mm -hmm. have lint all over the place. But if you want to be more professional about it, you can use Flux Off. This episode, what do you say to me? By Flux Off. <laughs> it pretty much works the same. Yeah. You just spray it on. Ooh, I like that sound. Brush it, and then wipe it down. There you go. Very nice. Now it's really clean. Yeah. So now we're gonna do a PCB. There are a few different ways that you know people approach this. One way is 
you know, people like to put in all the components and bend the wire leads out so they don't fall out and then they flip it around and solder everything. I like to go a, a couple components at a time and okay. I like to solder anything from the top that I can because mm -hmm. then it keeps it seated when you turn it over. So I'll just show you my method. You're welcome to, you know, go in any order, you know, preference that you prefer. So we're, we're holding it. In this case, this is a nice little PCB holder. What's nice is you put it in there. Oh, you can spin it around. And it's completely adjustable. You can loosen this and extend it, but you can work on either side very easily. If you don't have that, in this case, I made my own. I used a couple of alligator clips and a heavy piece of steel and some armature wire. And I just made this little, they're called helping hands. And you can buy stuff like this as well, but these are nice because then, you know, you can still rotate it if you build it like this. And it's really heavy, so it doesn't move around. That's the mm -hmm. biggest thing is you don't want it to, to be moving around. Yeah. And then if you really don't have anything at all, you could just, you know, put it on a surface that you're not concerned about. You can use like a silicone mat mm -hmm. um, because silicone mats won't. Uh, burn, but you typically want it to be elevated because when you put your components in, the wires come out the other side. So we're going to start with the components that can be soldered from the top, and that means that when I put like the transistors in here, for instance, see how you can see both the leg of the transistor and that solder pad. Mm -hmm. So you can you can solder that from the top, but something like a capacitor, you can't see it at all. So you yeah. have to solder it from the other side. All right, let's start with our transistors. On a transistor, it's a little difficult because, uh, you know, to get to that center lead. But either way, you should be able to do this. So start, clean your tip, add just a little bit of solder, Absolutely. make sure things are clean. And then we're going to touch the leg of the component and the solder pad for about two seconds. And then we're going to bring in the solder, give it another two seconds, pull it away. We have a nice little solder joint there. You okay. see it? Mm -hmm. And then... Let's get the other side. There we go. Very and nice. And we're gonna try to get the center and it's probably best to touch it on one side and bring the solder on, on the other. There we go. Let me take this one out. And I just wanna show you with one component. We're gonna flip this around mm -hmm. and then we're gonna cut off the legs. This is very important to wear glasses during this because when you cut these, they shoot off like little metal bullets <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> like this has been pretty good, but sometimes I, you cut these and they just shoot right past your head. Jeez, don't have your mouth open. No, definitely don't. So there you go, that's the first component. So what I'm gonna do is I'll do one side and then I'll let you do the other. Gotcha. All right, so there's your transistor. There you go. If it doesn't sit perfectly straight, you can just get one side and then you can, once one side is tacked in, you can bend the bend it to okay. position it straighter. Very good. You, I think you've been practicing. <laughs> I have not. I'm trying to get under there. There we go. Now that it's soldered in place, mm -hmm. what do you got to do next? Got to flip it over yep. to the bottom. Yep. So let's make that happen. Snippy snip snip. And these are just flush cutters. They're called flush cutters because the the bottom side of it's flat. So you can actually cut flush to a surface. So next, let's do a component that you can't solder from the top. So these uh -oh. are potentiometers. We're just gonna put that in right there. See how it fits right in there? Mm -hmm. And we'll Two them, of them. Yep, it takes two of them. And we're gonna put them both in and then underneath I'm just going to bend these outward. That way, when you flip it over, you can see that they're they're bent out so it holds it in place. So now all you have mm -hmm. to do is solder those. You want to do it? Uh, you you do one, I'll do the other. All right, you getting nervous? No, 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 not me. It, it's okay to be nervous. No, 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 I'm not nervous over here. Ready? Touch both the, the component and the mm -hmm. solder pad. Add the solder. Remove the soldering iron. Oh, I just did them all. Oh, oh well. I can cut them there, off for there's you. There's more. Soldering is actually pretty fun. So I got started. I didn't want to stop. Once you start, you can't stop. Mm -hmm. It's better than Pringles. Less filling. All right, Brandon, you've done pretty good so far. I think I'm just going to hand my soldering iron over to you and let you finish up the project.
Very good. You built something. I did. You get to keep that, Brandon. That is yours. You get to oh, keep that sweet. forever I'm going to put it inside my fridge. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't run to your fridge. <laughs> We've got one more thing to cover. We, what if you got to join two wires together? I wouldn't know what to do. I wouldn't know where to start. I mean, you could twist them. True, but I'm assuming you have a better way. I do. So remember this, this is what they call helping hands. Yes. You can use this to hold stuff in place like that or however you want. This is the simplest way to join two wires together. Just twist them and add a little bit of solder. There you go and gotcha. done. Of course, it's all exposed, so you want to add heat shrink to it. Yeah. So you can fold it down, and then I'm going to get a bigger piece of heat shrink. It's like a little Band-Aid for wires. It is. And you put that on there. And then very quickly, you don't want to you know, burn it. You just want to heat it up. Now, I'm using a torch. You don't have to do that. You can use a heat gun or just a regular lighter. So that method that I just showed you, it works, and you get a very good bond, and it's very strong. However, it's, it's bulky and that's not really clean. So I'm gonna show you another method. You typically wanna take your heat shrink and put it on ahead of time because if the other end of the wire is connected to something, you won't be able to get it on after you solder. Oh, okay, yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our up. heat shrink. We're gonna use our helping hands here and we're gonna do what's called tinning the wire. Oh, So what is that? Tinning the wire means you're just adding solder mm -hmm. to the wire and I just usually start here, add a little bit as it melts, and Make move your way along. up down. Now, typically, the end of the wire gets a little bulky, so then I'll cut off the tip. Okay. Right there. Okay, so wire number one is ready. Wire number two, you want to twist the strands together. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to tin this wire. And then again, the end gets a little bit bulky, so we're just gonna cut that off. Give a little haircut. Yep. And then what we wanna do is we want these two wires neck to neck here. Gotcha. So you want, them, you want them like this. Once you get those two wires together, you hold them with your helping hands. Gotcha. Then you just take your soldering iron. Once they're together, you just but you just want them nice and clean. And then what you can do, you bring your heat shrink and it goes over oh. the wire. And look how clean that is. Very clean. So now you got a nice clean bond right there. You want to give it a shot? I, I, I can do it. All right. Join these wires together. You can choose the method. <laughs> okay. Ready? Just slap it on the old helping hand. Yep, helping hands are very helpful. Um, okay, so uh, sorry to interrupt, but you want to touch it more in the middle. Oh, and then the work wire. my way up. Yeah, because the tip it it takes longer. To, for the heat to travel. Okay, I got So that. if you start at the tip, then the heat has to travel inward, which is very difficult for it to do that. So gotcha. start in the middle of it, and you don't want to start too close to the shielding because then it starts melting the, the sheath. Okay. There you go, just, you, you need to hold it on longer. Let it warm up. There you go, now add the solder. There, you guys see how it went right in? Mm-hmm. Perfect. A little, a little rocky start, but we got there. <laughs> we got there. So now you have your two wires joined. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I would do is you don't need like that entire section. You just need to make sure that you know there's a healthy bit of it connected, and then just get rid of the the end garbage. That way you got a nice clean end. Gotcha. So then just straighten it out and bend that joint to one side or the other. Oh, I didn't know you could touch it. Still, it's not hot. No, it, it cools down after about 10 seconds. Well, not even 10 seconds, probably sooner. All right. And then just go ahead and just push this and then wave it around. 
Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it goes really fast. So get the other side too. No, that's good. You're about to gotcha. cook it for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So there's your first wire joint. All right, so I think you learned a lot in a short amount of time. You did exceptionally well for a, a beginner solder. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, but we're gonna be doing a lot of projects and I gotta make sure you know what you're doing. Absolutely. So I, I would say if this was a test, you passed. Sweet. And it was a test. Gotcha. <laughs> there was a lot of a lot of tips here to cover, a lot of you know things to remember, but really at the core of it, it's first in, last out with the soldering iron. That means touch the two components that you need to solder together so they can get hot enough to melt the solder. Make sure the solder flows in and gives you that nice little concave joint. Mm -hmm. Then remove the soldering iron only after you see that happen. You wanna make sure you wear some kind of glasses, goggles, something, protect your eyes. Absolutely. Don't breathe in the fumes. All right, is that it? I think that's it. We've got a lot of great tips here. Watch the video a couple times if you know if you want to learn something. Comment below if you want to learn something additionally. What we taught you today is good for the Hack Make Mod projects and most hobby electronics. Yeah, absolutely. And if you guys learned anything like I did, make sure you leave a comment below. Also hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Drop a like on the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Brandon. I'm Chad. And we'll catch you next time. Something I want to mention, wear yeah, whoa, pants. Whoa, 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 you know what also? Wear, uh, wear pants. <laughs> Hot solder on the legs is I wasn't either. ready for you. To... I'm wearing two pairs of pants. Well, that's good. He's doubly protected. <laughs> and I'm wearing a diaper. <laughs>